bug and a disease that kills citrus trees discovered in Rancho Bernardo. We'll tell you what you need to know. Plus, President Biden's State of the Union plans that are already in the works here in California. What's it like to live on a submarine? For today's day in the life of a sailor training, we're going to take you on board the USS Albany. Which cars are being rejected by some insurance companies? And leave it to these eighth grade STEM all-stars to solve climate change with their future city called... And San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria joins us live in studio to answer your questions. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A disease that kills citrus trees has been discovered in Rancho Bernardo. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Tonight, a citrus quarantine is in place in a 95 square mile area as the California Department of Food and Agriculture tries to save San Diego citrus crop. CBS 8 Santa Laurel went inside that quarantine area to find out what you need to know. I'm here in a neighborhood off the 15 and the 56. I'm going to show you a map of the affected area in just a minute because authorities are asking if you live within the quarantine area and it's huge. They're asking that you don't pick the oranges, the lemons, the limes that are growing in your yard and take them to work or something. They don't want you to share that. They're trying to cut down on the spread and kill these little bugs. That we have detected the disease Wang Long Bang or HLB in three residential citrus trees in the community of Rancho Bernardo. Wang Long Bing, the plant disease that kills citrus trees discovered in Rancho Bernardo. It isn't harmful to humans or animals, but it will kill your citrus tree and there's no cure. It'll stop producing edible fruit, so the fruit will become very rancid tasting. It will never fully ripen. Tonight, a new citrus quarantine covers a 95 square mile area of Rancho Bernardo, up to the north by the 15 and Auto Parkway, all the way south to Poway Road. It extends east by Lake Ramona and all the way west to Via de las Flores. Anyone inside that area, take caution. Consume your fruit, enjoy it, keep it on, on your property, don't move it. Um, definitely don't move any type of um, propagative material, so no small trees, no stems and leaves. Wang Long Bing or HLB is a major threat to San Diego's $115 million annual citrus crop and to all orange, lemon and lime trees that grow in our yards. The Asian citrus psyllid eats citrus tree leaves and spreads the bacteria from tree to tree. Since there is no cure, ag leaders say the only way to try and stop the spread is for homeowners and commercial growers to test trees on their property. Infected trees must be removed. Crews are right now going door to door offering to test inside the quarantine area and putting out bug traps to kill the Asian citrus psyllid. They're very small, <laughs> um, smaller than a grain of rice. Um, but you can see them if you're looking with your naked eye. Sometimes they'll look like a little thorn. If you're concerned about the trees on your property, contact our state ag department. An inspector can come test for the disease. That number is with this story on our website at CBS8.com. In Rancho Bernardo, this is Anna Laurel for CBS8. Thanks, Anna. Two separate boats believed to be involved in human smuggling operations washed up on our coast today. Lifeguards tell us around 15 people ran ashore just before 9 this morning. A panga was reported near Ocean Street in Carlsbad. It was abandoned, but 17 life jackets were found on board. Just hours later, an overcrowded fishing boat showed up on the shores of South Mission Beach. I really don't know who these folks are. There are a lot of folks that are um, economic migrants that just want to come here for a better life. But with those same folks, you have uh, criminals. Border Patrol says the migrants who landed on the beach today typically have a getaway car waiting to take them to a stash house. We will have much more on this tonight at 10 and 11. A man accused of killing his wife in a Skyline home on Monday just pleaded not guilty in court a few hours ago. 84-year-old Mikhail Ahmad is facing a murder charge. Police say he shot his wife, 78-year-old Mildred Ahmad, multiple times during an argument Monday morning. She died at the home. Police say a family member took the gun away from Mikhail and called 911. If convicted, Ahmad could be sentenced to up to 50 years in state prison. In President Biden's State of the Union address, he called for social media companies to be held accountable. As our political reporter Morgan Reiner tells us, the president also spoke about an assault weapons ban and other measures that are in place or already in the works here in California. President Joe Biden is a Democrat, so a political expert told me that it is no surprise a lot of what he called for last night is already in the works in a supermajority blue state like California. 
In his State of the Union Tuesday night, President Joe Biden recognized California hero Brandon Say for stopping the Monterey Park mass shooter from continuing his spree. He saved lives. It's time we do the same. Banned assault weapons now. Something UC San Diego political science professor Thad Kauser said California has already done. California has a set of gun control laws that are the strongest in the nation, including an assault rifle ban, which is something he called for at the national level. Biden also called for higher taxes on the rich. Passed my proposal for the billionaire minimum tax. We've passed many taxes in the last few years, often through the initiative process on high income earners, millionaires. And that's what Joe Biden, that's part of his overall tax and spending package that he floated was keeping taxes the same uh, for people making under 400,000, but let's tax the rich. That's again, putting him just in line with where blue California has been. Protecting abortion rights. Congress must restore the right that was taken away and Roe v. Wade and protect Roe v. Wade. California enshrined the right to abortion in November, but some proposals the president mentioned, like the one dealing with social media. We must finally hold social media companies accountable for experimenting or doing running children for profit. Are being discussed in the legislature right now, but there are some limitations. California lawmakers have been reticent to take some of the strongest actions against social media because they're worried about killing the golden goose, right? Let's face it, these these tech giants, Meta uh, in, in, in Palo Alto, they are part of what feeds California's tax base, what feeds the job base of the Bay Area. President Biden also made it very clear last night that he believes workers have a right to unionize. Now, California does have some of the most union-friendly laws in the entire country, but last year there was a bill to allow staffers within the California Capitol to unionize. Along Lawmakers did not pass that bill into law. Kowser said it can't hurt in a way to have the president chime in. Thanks, Morgan. For the first time ever at the Super Bowl, the pilots involved in the national anthem flyover are all women. CBS 8's Steve Price got a chance to talk to the history-making Navy aviators and found out that there is a San Diego connection on their crew. <laughs> They make military flyover seem so easy, but in reality... It's sort of like, uh, you know, a swan on the water. There's a lot going on beneath the surface that we don't want you to see. Lieutenants Lindsay Evans and Jackie Drew say weeks of practice go into perfecting split-second timing with the end of the national anthem. And they know because these two naval aviators are participating in this year's Super Bowl flyover. We do a really good job in our um, business of being in high pressure situations a lot. So it weirdly feels routine, even though it's a very unique opportunity. And making this year's event even more unique is that it will be the first time a Super Bowl flyover will be performed exclusively with female pilots. It's honestly super exciting, super, super stoked to kind of uh, be able to represent just like females in, in naval aviation. These six pioneers were the first female naval aviators to get their wings. They started their training in 1973. Back then, there were limitations on what they could fly, what squadron they could join. But now, exactly 50 years later, things are very different. All of us are in combat deployable airplanes, have participated in combat deployable uh, squadrons, and have been on operational deployments, which is a huge stride. And a lot of the work that they did 50 years ago means that we don't even have to think about it when we go to work. The fighter jets participating Sunday are not based out of San Diego, but there are several local connections. Petty Officer 2nd Class John Rogers, who graduated from Rancho Bernardo High, will be working behind the scenes to help maintain the aircraft. And several of the squadrons recently deployed overseas with the San Diego-based USS Carl Vinson. Like the Navy runs through San Diego, so we've been there more times than we can count. A super opportunity for some super naval aviators to be seen at one of the world's most watched events. Steve Price, CBS 8. Thanks, Steve. Can't wait to see that. It is fascinating. Such precision. Still ahead. Are certain makes of cars being rejected by some insurance companies? We verify. Plus, in our Sailor for a Day series, we give you a first-hand look at what can go wrong on board a submarine.
We are looking at some showers back in the forecast by this weekend and even could see some on Valentine's Day. All those details are coming up.